What's going on everybody in the office. And once again, we are tackling a subscriber question. So if you are new to the channel or you've been following for a while and you have any question, please comment down below. I will try and make a video directly responding to whatever issue you have. That being said, today's question is from Jason Joseph. And he asked in my last video, well, I guess it's not really my last video, one of my older videos. If you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out right over here. But it's all about how you can create a cool and easy Photoshop graphic labeling your properties when you do aerial photos. And he wants to know how you can take that graphic from Photoshop and import it on over into DaVinci Resolve to use it as a property marker. That way you have two seamless products that match. Well, pretty simple process and I'll get right to it. Let's go. All right, everyone, here we go. Let's jump right in it. And we're already on the screen. First thing I'm going to do is open up Photoshop. So Jason asked in my previous tutorial, I had a situation like this where there's a bunch of houses, but which one am I actually showcasing? So I showed you how to make this label exactly, except this is the actual address that we're talking about today. So if you haven't seen that video, once again, go check it out and I'll teach you exactly how to build this, but I'm going to teach you how to take this built out call out label and transfer it into DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing you'll want to do is highlight all of the correct things. So I've got the text, I've got the box, I've got the box copy. So that's the white around the box. Then I have the actual arrow. Those are the things I have selected, right? I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna select new and it doesn't really matter what you pick here as long as it's a large size. So I'm just gonna pick this one because it's the closest one. And we're gonna come over here. Now that we have the new one, we can grab these and simply click on it, see how everything moves around. You can just simply drag it up to the top, hold it for a second and pop it on down to where you're going. Now you have this in a whole new entity. What you're gonna wanna do to use this in DaVinci Resolve is deselect everything, grab this background layer that's automatically selected or created whenever you make a new item, unlock it so that way you have the ability to delete it. Now you have no background in just this. Next step to do is file and I always export and export as PNG. The PNG is important because it's what gives you the clear background. And so that way you don't have to worry about using a dark or blend mode or anything like that. Then you could simply type in whatever the address is and I save it to my desktop just to make it very easy. Save, there we go. We have now created this PNG on our desktop. So here it is on the desktop. When I pull it up, there it is. That's what it looked like. Can't see the white border because obviously everything looks white, but trust me, when we pull it into DaVinci Resolve, you will be able to see it. So there are multiple ways to get things into DaVinci Resolve and into your timeline, but the easiest way for something like this is to simply grab it. I will hover over the little icon on the bottom and then it pops up and I can put it right in the same timeline that everything else is in for this house. As you can see, here's everything I shot at this property, exteriors, interiors, drone, and all that jazz. So we're gonna go ahead on over into edit tab where I've already pre-selected two kind of generic aerial situations in which you might wanna use this label. Here is clip number one. These are all shot 60 frames a second. So that way I can slow them down if needed, but the ones that I'm showing you now have not been slowed down. This is just how they are. And this is the second shot I'll show you that's a little bit more dynamic and I'll show you how to keep that label exactly where you want it. So let's go on over to the first one. As you can see, I've got my media pool open over here. If you don't have it open and you don't see that, it's this button right here, your media pool. Click it on open and at the very top, you can see where I created that label in Photoshop and saved it off. Now, all I have to do is drag it down to where I want it and make sure I put it to where I want it. Now, as you can see, it is not pointing at the house that I wanted at yet, but that will be a simple process. Make sure you do not have the video clip selected, but you have the actual label selected. Then you can go on up here and mess with the adjustments like so. Bring the zoom down, bring the X axis up, bring the Y, and there we go. Now it is pointing at the house. Just like that, you now have a label in DaVinci Resolve for your video that matches the label in the photos you deliver so everything looks 
cohesive. Now, that was a very easy thing to do because the house kind of stays in the center as I'm doing this rotational pivot shot. Now, let's go on to something a little more difficult. What if I wanted to do something like this, where the house is constantly moving? There's actually two different ways we can do it, but we'll go ahead and show you right now. As before, I could either just take this and hold Alt or Option and drag it over to create a second one, or I could go up here and grab it and drag it down, whatever works best for you. Now, if you Alt drag this one over, it will have the same look that we applied to the first one, so it will be the same size. If you drag down a new one, it goes big straight in the center. Those are the two differences in the way of doing them. I want to start from scratch or fresh, so I will just drag a new one down. I will go to the front of my timeline clip and I will adjust everything accordingly. Just as before, zoom down a little bit, X position, Y position. This is where the house is, right? There we go. We'll bring it. Let's make the label a little bit smaller. There we go. So now we have the two labels. Now the problem is, since this is such a motion clip, as you can see, the label stays still and the house keeps moving. So how do we fix these two situations, right? How do we make them look cohesive as though the label is there in real life? Well, in this situation in particular, there are two easy ways we can do it. The first thing I would recommend doing is making sure that your arrow is right on the edge of the house so it makes an easy place to duplicate. From here, we're gonna start using some of our keyframes. That's what these little triangle or diamonds over here on the side are. These are all of your keyframes, right? So the very first thing you wanna do, once again, make sure you're at the very beginning of your clip. Everything is where you want it to be. You're gonna start a keyframe for all of these. It makes it easier. You could just use the zoom and position. I use all of them because in more complex shots, you may need to rotate or pitch or yaw to make it look like it's in the correct place. But I digress. Back to what I was talking about. Here we go. You've now created a key point at the very beginning of the clip. Now what you can do is scrub to the end of the clip, like so. Then readjust the position of everything. So that way it's in basically the same spot just like that. And since the house got a little larger, I'll actually increase this just a little bit. Oh, look at that. I need to readjust my color monkey settings. This is a good time to remind you if your monitor is not color calibrated, make sure you do that. It makes everything much simpler and your final products much better. Now, if you're liking this so far, just remember, please press the like button. It helps me figure out what videos to make in the future. But I digress. Here we go. Let's press play. Look at that. Just like that, the label moves right with the property because of these keyframes. If you watch over to the right, you can watch them automatically going forward and backward that's the difference now there is a different way you can do this that involves tracking and it's a little more complicated so I'll save that for a total different tutorial because these are really the easiest ways to get it going and make it look good so there you go I can put these two together just to show you and you now have two clips where the addresses match. It's obviously pointed out on the map. And there are two scenarios. One was very easy where we didn't have to do anything to the label. And just like this one, we had to do a little bit to the label, but it looks good. It looks like it was meant to be there, right? That's it. That's all I got for you. As always, if you enjoy the content and the way I present it, please press that like button, mash, subscribe, and all that jazz. As always, I will catch you next time.